Hey guys, I'm back here and I want to share something with you that I wouldn't say I created, but I kind of came up with. So, for instance, what we started with, this is a, a CJ7 Jeep. It's the header panel that goes where the windshield wipers go. And what I wanted to do, when this came in, it was all rusted. And these right here are like a, a dimple. I don't know if you guys can see them in the video, but they kind of protrude out a little bit. And I knew I could make them, I just didn't know how to go about it. So, I got to thinking, and I got to thinking, and I came up with an idea, and it worked pretty well. So, what I ended up doing is I made a template panel, okay? I just blew four holes in a sheet with a hole saw. Then what I did is I went over to the press and if you have any of these, these are really cool tools, but they're dimple dies. Um, I ended up getting these from, um, uh, it's called Next Gen Off-Road. They're relatively cheap. I bought them years ago. I have them all the way down to half inch, all the way up to, I think two or three inch. So, um, but, I like these better than the knockout punch. The knockout punch in the race shops, they eventually went dull. Um, these, you just hole saw. So hole saw 50 holes. Just go over there, put this in, put them in the press and start pressing them. So <clears throat> let's get back to where, where I was. So what I ended up doing is I didn't know the height that I needed. So if you could see right here on this ridge, that's where the, the the die is going to start pressing to that angle. So what I did is I got it seated and I started out with one and then I was like, well, that's not enough. That's not even close. So then I was like three and I was like, well, that might be too much. So I went back to two and I did four. And I'm going to show you what I ended up doing is I took this panel, the original, and this is what you guys can do. And you set that up there and you get about a quarter inch gap. If you guys could see that better this way. You get about a quarter inch gap when it's sitting flat. So what I ended up doing, I tested each one. So that one was a little low. That one's right on the money. So that was four. So what I ended up doing was making a, a brand new panel, <clears throat> which I'm gonna show you. I made a brand new panel. I marked everything out and I hole salt the, the, the hole in the panel. Then I took the die and went over and dimpled it to four, four presses. And I say four, meaning once I get it seated, I just lift up my jack on my press and I go one straight up four times. It gave me the same, so I know I'm consistent. Then what I did is like, well, now I gotta build a blank. And if you were to measure this, this has grown to an inch and three eighths. I started with an inch and a quarter. So what I did, I went to my hole saw bin and the inside, well, it's a little bit smaller than an inch and three eighths. So I found an inch and three eighths hole saw and on the ID was the same measurement of this hole. The cool thing about this, it's gonna be a windshield wiper. So the center hole on your slug, when you use that hole saw and you just make a flat pattern, uh, something similar to these, your hole is now in the center. So now you have a centering point, but now you just, so you just clean them up and you end up welding them in. Obviously this is a smaller one. That's what it was another test deal, but you'll get it. And what I did is I just TIG welded around it, but it left me my center hole. And this is what I'm kind of showing you guys. You guys got to think outside the box with whatever tools you may have. That center hole indicated my center hole for my windshield wiper. My windshield wiper needed to be a 5 8 hole, so I took a Unibit, ringed it out to 5 8 and then I used a 90 degree straight edge, like so, so, and I put it on this edge, because this is 90. I found center of that little notch, measured that, that was an eighth inch. So I scribed my center line, and I'm gonna show you the finished product, but it came out pretty cool, and I just wanted to share with you guys kind of like a little tip. If you have dimple dies, especially these, because a knockout punch 
usually the bigger, like this size is probably a, anywhere between a 3 8 bolt to a 7 16 bolt, which is going to be a bigger diameter hole, which it doesn't matter because you've still got to calculate the deal. But the problem with the knockout punch and the flare built in one is when you're going and you're pushing it, it's actually cutting and bending. So by the time it cuts, you're, you're past your flare. These you can creep up on. So I wanted to share that with you guys, but I'm gonna show you what I'm doing now. And you guys can see the after project. I'm TIG welding it in and spotting it in, but this is the after. As you can see, the dimples turned out pretty cool. I mean, almost like stock. But I'm just welding it in where it rotted. And we've got a stock, a stock looking panel. There you go, before and after. <clears throat> so to me, it was easier to make, and it could, I mean, some of you may think it's not, but it really is easier to make a complete panel like this. All it does is have a break in it, has a bead in it, and then it has those in it. It's a lot easier to do this than it is to try to replace a rough spot there, which gets into the bead, as you can see on both sides. See? And then you come up here and you got rust on that flange that the owner wanted gone. And then on the back side, it was the same way. So to me, it's better to make a whole new panel. So before I did it on both sides, I primed inside so it won't rust. I had to make a new lip on this back side, which I could show you guys. If I could do it without making it fall. So that flange right there, that little half inch flange, that was rotted. Big time. So I cut it off flush with this, TIG welded on the back side a brand new flange. You can see where I'm splicing it in. <clears throat> splicing it in. And then that's gonna get spot welded to that. But you can see the primer inside there that I primed. And then they'll just blow paint in the areas that you see. But I wanted to share that with you guys. It's a, I came across it and I thought it was actually a pretty cool idea because I never actually did them. They do make dies that you can press that, but they have to be perfectly aligned to push straight and one thread's on to the bottom and top. But I didn't, I don't have those. So I had to make, I had to make do and I got the job done. <clears throat> and I'm a firm believer in, if you could do a lot of this stuff with what you've got or the tools or by hand, and eventually someday you get the equipment to do that kind of stuff, you're gonna have a lot better knowledge on how a lot of this stuff works. But this is, this is basically trial and error. I mean, this is how I do a lot of stuff. Uh, same with the bead roll. I mic'd out the bead roll on that panel. I did a test panel with different beads, and I mic'd each individual one until I got the closest one, if not the same. Um, once I did that, I counted my revolutions down on the bead roller to press the, the bead in it, and then I got the same height. Once you get all that, you can replicate anything pretty much like this. Like the customer came in yesterday, and he was just kind of in awe. He, uh, he called up one of his buddies, like, hey man, this guy's good. And he sent him pictures, hey, do you think you can do this? Yeah, send me the parts. His buddy's gonna start sending me stuff on his cars, you know? So it's cool that I'm kind of showing you guys this, but it's also for some of you guys that are wanting to get into this, it's just another way to skin a cat, I guess you would say. Um, it's, there's so many different ways to do it. There's so many machines out there that's capable of doing it. But this right here, I was able to get the job done. I mean, I don't have the actual tools to do a lot of that stuff, but I made it work and it turned out just as good as stock. So 
that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. it. It was kind of like a little tip. So if you guys do have those uh, dimple dies, is what they're called, the pressed tile, um, you can you can make those. You can make them all the way up to the full flare of what that's capable of doing. But if you have small stuff like that, you could easily make it. But like I said, I got those at Next Gen Off Road. N E X T G E N Off Road. They sell all kinds of stuff. I bought them a couple of years ago. They smell. They sell a smaller kit, and I think it was like I don't know, like 150 bucks, and it went from like half inch up to like. I want to say like inch and three quarter, but it's not every size. It's kind of like whole saws, you know, you get like six of them for that. Um, or you could buy the whole kit for like 380 and it goes all the way up to three inch. But those dies, what I like about them is when I researched them, those are capable of punching flares in an eighth inch plate. And a knockout punch with a flare in it is not capable of that. So that's why I got those. But anyway, <clears throat> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned, I'm gonna have more. It's just kind of been slow in the shop. This came in, I'm getting this done. The Jaguar's on hold. I do have a little bit of stuff I'm gonna post on a video for you guys. Not a long video, it's basically an update. I've just been kind of like tidying up with what I've done on the Jaguar to get to a point. Um, Cause it looks like as long as I can't get parts, this thing's probably gonna go away and something else has to come in at this point. So. You guys stay tuned. If you're not a subscriber, click the bottom link in the bottom, subscribe. I'm gonna start posting more video, videos, make more tools, stuff like that to help you guys do this kind of stuff at home with the tools that you have. If you have any questions, send me a message down in the comment box. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if you have any questions, I've had numerous guys call me on some of my tools on their, they wanna build one like mine, ask me particular questions. Feel free to do that. I'm, I'm here to help you guys. Uh, this is a dying art. So if you guys have any questions or you guys want to see something performed or done, whether it's on the wheel, the bead roller, or something like that, send me something and I'll figure out what I can do to kind of show you guys which direction you guys need to take with doing it. But other than that, you guys stay tuned and uh, I'll see you guys next time.